reputation and connections. That's how international trade actually works. The challenges that we see is that we have smaller institutions in small jurisdictions in countries which potentially have the great ability to do export but are unable to get import and export of their goods. And that's caused by a number of factors. The first one is access to liquidity. The second one is looking at the whole of the ecosystem. The third one also is currency. So what we're always trying to do is minimize the risk and enable many people in different jurisdictions to have that opportunity to trade effectively and competitively in international markets. So EuroX in Bank are experts in dealing with buyers across the globe who want to import goods. To do that, they will first of all receive or have an interaction with a seller and get hold of a pro forma invoice, a sales contract or a purchase order. The aim of our company is to be the de facto go-to trade finance institution globally. In order to fulfill that ambition for the company and the drive that we have, although we're small today, we are building the largest sales force for trade finance on the planet. We're looking at small businesses, small medium enterprises, being able to competitively, productively sell their goods across the world. And we facilitate that global trade. We're very much focused on a number of instruments, letters of credit, standby letters of credit, performance bonds and guarantees. And that was really helping, again, those smaller businesses to be that much more competitive. What's interesting in trade finance is it's long-term, and that's why we have to build up very good relationships, trust, confidence with the buyers to make sure we can also look at repeat business as well. It always starts with a document from a buyer, and then we go through the process once we produce our draft with all the conditions on it. But what's also interesting about that is that a lot of the goods need an inspection when they arrive as well. As an example, recently, fraud and corruption are very heavily uh, featured in international trade. Most recently, there was a consignment of copper wire, which was supposed to be arrived in a container on a certain ship. When it was opened, or rather when it left the port at the beginning, there was an inspection certificate to say everything was fine. When it arrived, it was full of stones painted copper. Somebody has responsibility and liability, so insurance needs to be applied throughout the process as well just to make sure again that the quality of what you're receiving is exactly the same as what you think you're going to get. Trade finance needs people with experience from a number of industries. So that's why we've brought people into the organization who are specialists in the insurance area, into understanding the software to drive this. We've implemented a blockchain environment inside our trade platform. So we're making use of all the latest technology to give us an edge in how we're dealing with creating instruments, tracking instruments, and settling instruments as well. We also contribute very heavily to international conferences and exhibitions. We are very regularly featured in uh, events such as the New India Review, which is going next week. So that's an online conference. Two weeks after that is the Dubai conference. We've been featured also across the world. We're very specific to trade. And I think that expertise in trade is beginning to now expand to the point where we're being asked to provide thought leadership articles. We're writing blogs. We're making sure those are accessible as well. I think what we're going to see is uh, an increase or back to the levels we saw pre-COVID. I think that also we need to see where goods are coming from. I think there's going to be much more coming from China. However, we also see a number of countries viewing Africa as a source of, of goods for the new supply chains. And I think it's really important that we are now viewed as being one of the go-to resources 
to speak about things like free trade agreements, to speak about blockchain in trade. Our plans for the future, I think, are very, very simple. We still want to provide the optimum service, optimum price, optimum value, optimum trust and confidence, and to be the market leader, the go-to company for anybody wanting to do a trade finance transaction.